This lesson deals with the current divider rule. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 2, starting on page 53. Let me start by stating the current divider rule. If K resistances are in parallel, then the current through the jth element, that would be this element right here, is equal to this current times this conductance over the sum of the conductances. Now you may notice that this sounds very similar to the voltage divider rule, except that current is replacing voltage, parallel is replacing series, and conductance is replacing resistance. This isn't just a coincidence, but it's actually called duality in circuit theory. It really comes from the fact that you can write Ohm's law as V equals I times R, or I is equal to G times V. And there's a similarity between those equations when voltage replaces current, current replaces voltage, and conductance is replacing resistance. We won't talk much more about that in this course, but it's something that we'll pursue later on. Now, why would this be true? Okay, let's assume that the box produces a voltage V of S, and current's going to have to come out of the plus terminal and eventually go back to the minus terminal. And that's because this can only absorb power. Let's assign a current to R1 through R sub K. The current in this element is going to be the voltage across it divided by the resistance. So that's V sub S divided by R sub J, or G sub J times V of S. Now what is the current I sub S equal to? Well, it's equal to I1, I2, all the way through I sub K. But the current in R1 is going to be, again, V sub S over R1. Likewise for I2, V sub S over R2, and so on. You can pull out the common V sub S, and then you have 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, all the way through 1 over R sub K, or just simply the sum of the conductances. Solving this equation, we could say that V sub S then is equal to I sub S divided by the sum of the conductances. And now we can substitute that back in up here. So the current in the jth element is going to be G sub J times this expression for V of S. Exchange these two and you have the theorem above. Just like with the voltage divider, there's a couple special cases that are quite handy actually. So let's take a look at them. First one is suppose that you just have two resistances in parallel and a current I sub S entering and a current of I sub S leaving. Again, this could be a box with many things hooked up to it or even just a current source. I'll call this one I1 and I2. Now just using the current divider rule, the current I1 is going to be G1 over G1 plus G2 times I of S. Likewise for I2, G2 over G1 plus G2 times I of S. Now let's put in the fact that G1 is 1 over R1 and G2 is 1 over R2. Let's multiply numerator denominator by R1, R2. Yeah, just multiplying by 1. The R1's cancel, we just get R2. R1 times R2 here would just give me R2, and R1 times R2 divided by R2 would give me R1. Same is true here, just replace this by its equivalent of 1 over R2, 1 over R1, 1 over R2. Multiply numerator denominator by R1, R2, R1, R2, and you get R1, R2, and then R1. This only works for two resistances in parallel. But what you've got here is that if you want the current in R1, you take the ratio of R2 over R1 plus R2 times I sub S. I'll call this the resistance current divider, and I'll call this the conductance current divider. Although they're equal to each other, sometimes taking the reciprocal of resistance can be a very small number, and so a little harder to work with in terms of just using a calculator. Let's look at the case of two equal resistances, where G1 equals G2. That would give me a half. You have two equal resistances, then half the current goes here, half the current goes here. Suppose you have K equal resistances in parallel. Simply taking our general conductance rule again, we'd have G1 over G1 K times. So the G's drop out, you just have one K the current. And again, this is a special case of this one. So an example. Suppose you have a 5 amp current source, in parallel with 20 ohms, in parallel with 20 ohms, and then in parallel with 5 in series with 5. So what I have here is 10 ohms. If you want the current in this first resistance, it's going to be 5 amps times 1 over 20 divided by 1 over 20, and then 1 over 20, and then 1 over 10. 
multiply through by 20 here, and so I have a 1, a 1, a 1, and a 2. It gives me 1 over 4 times 5, 1 and a quarter amps. Now let's use this special case. Let's combine this into one resistance. So I have 10 ohms parallel with 20. Product over the sum is 6.667. And with the current I sub X, it's going to be this equivalent resistance divided by that resistance plus 20 times the 5 amps. So let's do that here. So you got 5 times 6.667 divided by 26.667, and that's also 1.25 amps. Although this special case is limited to only two elements in parallel, you can take cases where you have many things in parallel and reduce it to just two. This is handy if you're only interested in the current in one resistance. Otherwise, you have to go back and do quite a bit of manipulation, and this might be easier to do this. Working with numbers that aren't real small is usually easier to work with on a calculator. Just some of the numbers in your head. And this is current divider. 